Did you know that more than 80% of the ocean remains unexplored? That leaves plenty of room for lots of oceanic mysteries to uncover, from unsolved cases to discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some ocean mysteries. Caribbean Ocean Whistle Many eerie sounds originate underwater. A lot of times, these sounds induce fear and paranoia. The dark, endless ocean can make one feel stranded and alone. But when we add a mysterious noise, one that seems to have no origin, it is no wonder we become uneasy. Thankfully, even though this first noise comes from a tropical paradise, if it makes its way to your ears, you will remain unbothered. Originated in the Caribbean Ocean, there is a whistle that is both too deep for humans to hear, yet so strong it can be detected in space. While researching fluctuations in ocean mass, scientists from the University of Liverpool discovered anomalies in their measurements. A series of instruments were being used to measure pressure along the ocean's floor. These instruments sent back data suggesting consistent pressure throughout the seafloor in the tropics except for one instrument. This particular instrument was located in the Caribbean Ocean. After running computer models and analyzing data, the scientists discovered what is called a Rossby wave in the ocean's basin. As the ocean is flanked by South America, Central America, and the Caribbean islands, it creates a semi-enclosed basin, which is the perfect landmass for this wave to make its slow journey across the sea floor. For 120 days, a wave makes its way west across the ocean basin before disappearing out into the ocean. Another wave reappears on the west side of the basin, ready to make the 120-day journey again. As this wave interacts with the seafloor, a whistle-like sound is emitted. This sound is made in much the same way as a whistle we make through our lips. The vibrations in the air from our lips cause the high-pitched whistle we easily recognize. This ocean floor whistle, dubbed the Rossby whistle, is so low humans cannot hear it. To put it in perspective, it is 28 octaves lower than the lowest note on a piano. This A-flat note is easily detected from space because the oscillation caused by the wave disrupts Earth's gravity field just enough. While this whistle is naturally occurring and harmless to humans, scientists are excited by what we can learn from it. Since the Rossby wave enters the Gulf Stream once it leaves the Caribbean basin, scientists believe studying this whistle could give insights into Earth's entire climate system. Furthermore, since the oscillation that causes the whistle lasts 120 days, scientists also think they could predict sea level changes along the South American coast and better plan for storms and floods in that area. It is simply amazing that a single oscillation can give us so much information about our planet. It goes to show that even after millennia of study, Earth still has her secrets. The Zhang Seng When you find an oil tanker sailing through a huge body of water, you would think that there is an entire crew manning it. This is not the case for the Zhang Seng. In 2006, an Australian Coast Watch airplane spotted this 80-meter oil tanker floating in the Gulf of Carpentaria in Queensland, inoperable and extensively stripped. Knowing that this area is notorious for illegal activities, the Australian Coast Guard immediately sent a team to inspect the ship. Ready to apprehend possible violators of international seafaring laws, the Coast Guard was surprised to find out that no one was aboard. There were no signs of anyone being on the ship recently, nor did they find any evidence of illegal activity. The Zhang Seng is believed to have been floating around international waters for a long time on its own, without a crew nor a captain to steer it in a certain direction. As the Australian authorities tried to discover what happened to this ghost ship and how it ended up in the territory, they took a closer look at the cargo. Surprisingly, it had nothing on it except a huge pile of rice. They believed that the ship was used to provide supplies for shipping vessels, but they found no evidence that could confirm that. The authorities were able to retrieve some documents stating that the name of the ship is the Zhang Seng, but this is not indicated on the exterior of the ship. Its name and other identifying marks were all completely painted over. Why would an unmanned and unidentified ship be floating around uncharted waters? 
Why did it contain an immense amount of rice? Who owns it and where did it come from? The Zhang Seng was found to have a broken tow rope. Considering that the ship was badly stripped down, the broken tow rope could mean that it might have been on its way to a scrapyard, but did not make it. Instead, it drifted southwards and ended up in Queensland. However, this theory does not explain the large quantity of rice aboard and why its identifying features were all covered up. All that is certain about this ghost ship is that it had been sailing for an exceptionally long time. As to where it came from, what happened to it, and where it was headed to, this will forever be a mystery. The fate of the Zhang Seng was decided when no owner claimed it. Not long after it was discovered earlier in 2006, the Australian government determined that it is best to scuttle the ghost ship. Just like what usually happens with abandoned ships, to prevent it from being a navigational hazard, the Zhang Seng was disposed of on the morning of April 21, 2006. It was towed to deep waters and was deliberately sunk. The Aurora Islands In 1762, a Spanish merchant ship named Aurora was travelling from Lima to Cadiz when the ship's crew saw three strange islands. The same islands were once again spotted by the same ship in 1774. Then, in 1794, a Spanish survey ship was sent to determine the exact location of these islands. Named as the Aurora Islands, these islands were seen by various ships until 1856. Since then, the islands seem to have been lost in the ocean. The reported location of the Aurora Islands was halfway between South Georgia and the Falkland Islands. A number of different explanations about the persistent reports of the Aurora Island sightings during the late 19th century and the first half of the 18th century have been given by researchers. Some researchers have given the theory that they were in most probability large icebergs that melted over time. However, this explanation has been widely dismissed as icebergs are quite easy to identify and it is nearly impossible to mistake an iceberg for an island. A more widely believed explanation about the mysterious disappearance of the Aurora Islands is that these were actual islands that sank into the ocean during the 18th century. The proponents of this theory present the various other volcanic islands that sank into the ocean as evidence. However, no direct evidence has been found that could either approve or disprove this theory. The mysterious disappearance of the Aurora Islands is still a matter for debate amongst researchers, and it remains a mind-boggling oceanic mystery that cannot be explained. The Solomon Island Giants Over the years, there have been many stories of giants. These tales are said to have been told by North American Indians, and they speak of giant men who once lived and roamed in the lands of their forefathers. Over the last 100 years, stories about giants have come from the Solomon Islands. Researchers who spent time on the island were told stories from the native people, and they detailed mysterious encounters with giant men who would occasionally interact with the nearby people. The Solomon Islands are located in the South Pacific. A man named Marius is a researcher who was told about the tales of giants while on the island. After asking around, the locals began to open up to him and tell him stories of the giants. Incredibly, the natives spoke of giant humanoids that stood over 10 feet tall, while others shared stories of giants that reached even greater heights. The descriptions of the giants share a common theme. They are believed to have long reddish hair, protruding double eyebrows, bulging red eyeballs, flat noses, and wide, gaping mouths. These stories have even reached newspapers. One local was interviewed, and they told the story of a giant that left a footprint in a nearby construction site. One native told the story of a local woman named Mango, who had a run-in with these giants. The story goes that she had been taken by these mysterious humanoids and taken to an unknown location. A search party was sent out, but they weren't able to find any trace of her. The case eventually went cold and the locals soon moved on with their lives, However, several years later, the woman turned up alive. After trying to get information about what happened, though, the locals quickly realised that she wasn't the same person after being taken. As of today, the mystery giants of the Solomon Islands remain a mystery. 
Flight 19. The disappearance of five US Navy bombers is amongst the most mysterious events to ever take place over the Bermuda Triangle. On December 5, 1945, at 2.10pm, five Avenger bomber airplanes of the United States Navy took off from Fort Lauderdale in Florida. They were on a training mission that was given the codename Flight 19. Commander Charles Taylor was leading the mission. It was a routine training mission and the planes taking part in the mission were amongst the most reliable bombers at the time. Fourteen crew members were a part of this training exercise. According to the plan, the plans were to practice bombing at different areas over the sea. They were supposed to cover a triangular route and return to the base after completing the mission. It was a sunny day with clear skies. The planes were expected to complete the training mission without any hiccups, just like many other training missions completed before. However, at 3.30 p.m., the control tower received a message from Commander Charles Taylor. He told the control tower about his compass malfunctioning. The control tower immediately guided the plane in the right direction. Then, at 3.45 p.m., control tower received another message from Taylor, this time in a worried tone. He told control tower that they could not see the land and it seemed that they were off course. Constantly complaining of compass malfunction, the Flight 19 planes flew for a couple of hours before losing contact with the control tower. They could not be seen anywhere on radar. The US Navy immediately sent out two other planes to track the location of Flight 19. However, one of the planes that went out looking for Flight 19 planes also lost contact with control tower and could not be seen on radar. Over the next few days, the Navy sent out more than 300 boats and aircrafts in order to find the wreckages of the missing planes. However, they could neither find the lost planes nor the bodies of Commander Taylor and his men. The Navy sent many search missions to the triangular area between Florida, Puerto Rico and Bermuda. This was the planned flight path of the missing planes and this is where the planes were lost. However, they could not find any clue about the planes or the missing personnel. The term Bermuda Triangle emerged from this incident. But what do you make of these ocean mysteries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.